Welcome everybody. Today's exciting lecture is going to be regarding blood typing. Now why is blood typing important? Because if you're involved in medicine in any way, whether it's laboratory or the clinical battlefield, you'll be involved with blood typing in some sort. So blood typing is important. When, when somebody says they have a positive blood, what does that actually mean? Well, we're going to cover that. We're going to talk about the ABO blood type system. That's going to be the most common blood type system. But we're also going to deal with the RH system as well. And then also uh, we'll cover at the very end some clinical examples. And we're, we'll nail this home so that way when someone says a blood type, you'll understand the mechanism of what it actually means. Instead of just memorizing what it is, you're going to understand kind of why they came to that naming. So we're really going to nail this home. Uh, by the time you're done here, you really should have a good picture of what's going on. And to begin, we're going to start with the ABO system. I have a couple housekeeping terms that I want to that I want to take care of, just so you're on the same terminology page that I'm going to be talking about. So we've got antigen. The word antigen. What is an antigen? Well, it's going to be a marker. Everything is going to express some type of antigen. It's going to be the marker. It's going to be the molecules on the outside of that cell that distinguish it. Yes, I am a red blood cell or yes, I am a thyroid cell. Whatever, everything is going to have antigen. Bacteria is going to have antigen. Our own cells will have antigen. Anything that's foreign is going to present with a foreign antigen. So it's just simply a marker. It'll mark the cell. Next we've got this thing called an antibody. An antibody, uh, also known as an immunoglobulin, shorthand Ig, so an immunoglobulin is going to be made by the immune system. The immune system. And what it is, is it's going to be a little, a little marker here that kind of is in the shape of a Y. It's composed of two heavy and two light chains. But what it is, is it has a sticky end over here. And this sticky end is going to go and look at the different markers. Now, each immunoglobulin is specific to one antigen. So the antibody is specific to one antigen. Now, would it make sense for our body to produce antibodies against our own naturally occurring antigens? So let's say we have a cell here and it has squiggly antigen on the outside. So it has squiggly antigen. Now, all of a sudden our body is making these, our immune system is making these antibodies against the squiggly antigen. It makes no sense. Why would we want to attack our own cells? Instead, the body decides to downregulate this and we get rid of all the self-reacting antibodies. However, if this doesn't happen, that's where we get autoimmune reactions. Autoimmune reactions are simply where our body is going to make antibody against our own self-naturally occurring antigen. Typically, our body gets rid of that. So antibodies are going to bind antigen. So that's, that's the basics. Now we can actually move into ABO blood typing. So you've got four cells here. We're going to use some examples. And we've got four red blood cells, hence why they're drawn in red. Kind of worked out well. We're going to have blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. So these will come from four separate patients. So each one of these blood red blood cells is going to come from a separate patient. Now, I'm going to use I'm going to kind of dumb this down a little bit uh, and use shapes because I think shapes help demonstrate what this is all about the best. So we've got different antigens. Remember, antigen is going to be the cell marker. So for patient A who has type A blood, you're going to have rectangles. Rectangles will be the A antigen. The B antigen will be a square. So let's talk about this really quick. The first patient is going to have blood type A. So this is the blood type. So their blood type A. They're going to express a whole bunch of A antigen on the surface of their red blood cells. They're going to mark their red blood cells with the A antigen. And you get your blood type based on genetics. So your genetics is going to be what determines this. So uh, it's going to go through inheritance. 
and you're able to predict, but that'll we won't cover that right now, but you're able to show what antigen is on the outside of your red blood cell based on inheritance. So for patient A, they're going to have a whole bunch of A antigen on the outside of their red blood cells. Notice how they don't have any squares, which is going to be our B antigen. Our B antigen in someone that has B type blood is going to have a whole bunch of B antigen. Oh, B antigen. Okay, so for patient A, you know, I'm actually going to exit out of my email right now so that doesn't happen again. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of A antigen on blood type A. On blood type B, you have a whole bunch of B antigen. So what are we going to expect to see on uh, blood type AB? AB is going to have a mix of the two. They're going to have one allele. An allele is just a gene that's transferred, um, and it can be modified. So the allele for the A antigen, it'll have an allele for the B antigen as well. So you're going to get a mix of cell surface markers of antigens. For blood type O, when you see blood type O, think there are zero antigens. I mean, there are antigens, but there's no A or B antigen. And those are the main, this is the main blood typing system of the body. So if you see blood type O, it kind of looks like a zero, you're going to think zero antigen. So there's going to be no antigen. You don't have you don't have the A antigen, you don't have the B antigen. That's all this means, is what antigens are expressed. If you have blood type A, you're expressing A antigen. If you have blood type B, you're expressing B antigen. AB expresses both, and O expresses none. Now this is very important. Maybe you already know this, and that's good, because this is very simple. But you have to have a very good understanding of this, because once we talk about anti-A and anti-B versus uh, versus people who create antibodies against the other stuff, you kind of have to have a good foundation uh, which, which we can uh, build upon. So this is the basics of the ABO blood type system. Now there's this thing called the RH factor. Uh, all it is is it's simply measuring for a D antigen. If you have the D antigen, you're RH positive. If you don't have it, you're RH negative. So again, a red blood cell. Now, in this picture right here, we show that we only have one antigen on the cell surface. In reality, there's multiple, there's tons of antigens on the cell surface. However, we just focused on the A and the B one there. Now we're just going to focus on the RH uh, factor, which is going to be our D antigen. So uh, let's draw this as a circle. If, if our red blood cell here has red or white circles on its cell surface, that'll indicate the D antigen. And then we've got a red blood cell over here that doesn't. So based on that, that's, that's our antigen right there. So the circles mean the D antigen. Based on this, this cell would be RH positive. And then this cell would be RH negative. So we have an RH positive cell expressing this D antigen and this cell not expressing it. Okay, so that's the basics. We have the AB and the uh, RH systems, the categories that we're gonna be talking about. Now we kind of get to the clinical aspect. We covered the very basics, uh, important basics. That, that's where everything clinically derives from. So when I say anti-A antibody, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna get some red blood cells. We'll take some blood from a patient. And what we'll do is we'll expose it to anti-A antibodies. We'll also expose it to anti-B, we'll and also we will uh, expose it to anti-D. So there are multiple lab tests that we can do. We can do anti-A, anti-B, anti-D, and then we can also uh, figure out whether it's a couple other types, but we're just going to focus on these three for right now. So anti-A antibody, 
What it is, is it's an antibody. Remember, antibodies bind antigen. And it's going to look for A antigen. Now, anti-A antibody. It's going to be an antibody that binds A antigen. So if we do an anti-A antibody test, it'll be positive only when we find that A antigen. So we have our blood types. We have the A, B, A, B, and O. So we have the different blood types. And let's figure out um, anti-A antibodies. Well, we know A antigen is expressed in A positive, or in A blood type A patients. So we would see a reaction there. And this positive is when you see a, a reaction. So when the antibody binds to its antigen, it's going to cause a reaction. It can coagulate. So we're going to have some sort of coagulation, and this would indicate a positive test. Anti-A antibodies in blood of patient, in a patient of type B blood, you won't see a reaction. There is no A antigen present, because this anti-A only looks for A antigen. There's no antig A antigen here. There is an A antigen on blood type AB, so you will see a reaction there. And then for blood type O, you will not see a reaction because there's no antigen on blood type O, none whatsoever. I mean, there is, but there's no A antigen, there's no B antigen. That's all we care about right now. Now, the same thing for anti-B antibodies, we're gonna look for the B antigen. And when we see the B antigen, it will be a positive test result. We'll see that coagulation of the patient's blood. So for anti-B, you will not see it in blood type A patients. You will see it in blood type B. You will see it in blood type AB. And you will not see it in blood type O. So if the patient's blood has no anti-A and no anti-B antibodies, it's blood type O. And then if they express both anti-A and anti-B positive reactions, then it would be blood type AB. Hopefully this is making sense. This is, this is taking what we learned earlier and applying it to more of a clinical basis. So we've got anti-A plus anti-B. Um, blood type AB would be positive in both of these cases. Not to be confused with AB positive, however, AB blood would show a positive reaction. That's what I was going for. I'll erase it though, because I don't want it. Now we're going to talk about the anti-D antigen. And to talk about the anti-D, I'm just going to go into some examples, because that's probably the easiest way to teach this. So we've got A negative blood. Hey, will you pass me a unit of A negative blood? What does that mean? Well, it means that the blood type in the ABO system is we have an A antigen present. That should say antigen. My spelling is off right now. So we have A antigen present. What does this negative mean? Well, remember the negative is going to correlate with our RH factor. So if we say the blood type is A negative, the A comes from the ABO system. It's either A B, AB, or O. This positive negative stuff comes from the RH factor. So when I say it's RH negative, it's negative for the D antigen, which is kind of what this, shell, this uh, cell is showing, meaning it has no circles or D antigen on its surface. So let's go back here. So A negative means we're going to have A, A, but we're not going to have B or D antigen. A B negative would mean you would have antigen A and antigen B, but again, you don't have antigen D. B positive. B positive means you'll have antigen B present, and you're going to have antigen D present. This antigen D, the D antigen, is going to indicate that it's RH, uh, the RH positive. And then lastly, we'll go to O positive. O positive 
we're not going to have A, we're not going to have B, but we will have a D marker. We're going to have that D antigen present. So these are some of the examples. Now let's, let's go a little further. Now we're going to go to the concept of a universal donor and a universal acceptor of blood. Who's a universal donor? So let's say you're in the emergency department. You're either on a rotation or you're in charge of patient care and your patient is bleeding profusely. Now, you need to get them some packs of some red blood cells. You need to get them a unit of red blood cells, for example. Your, your attending or your proctor or whoever you're under or, or you yourself says, what blood type do I need to get? We don't have time to do lab studies to find out what blood cells. We can't do those anti-A or anti B or anti D testing. That's that's kind of the, the hallmark. We can't do that testing. We don't have time. Our patient is bleeding profusely. We need to get them some blood right now. And we're going to do that by uh, by getting some donor blood. Now, who is the universal donor? We're going to get some donor blood. Well, how do we find that out? Well, it's going to be O negative. O negative blood. Now why do I say that? It's because we're not going to have any antigen on its surface that we're concerned about in the ABO RH subtype systems. We're not going to have, so we're not going to have any A antigen. We're not going to have any B antigen. And we're not going to have any D antigen, making this O negative blood. Well why is that important? If they don't have any antigen on its cell surface, any antibodies that the patient that's receiving that blood has in their system, in their plasma, in their bloodstream, wherever those antibodies are, they will not bind because there is no antigen on the cell surface. Remember I said you have an antibody, AB, binds to antigen. Remember that? So if you have no antigen, you might have these antibodies, but they can't bind. So this blood is considered the universal donor. O negative blood, that is a very high yield concept to remember. And now we know why. It's because there's no antigen on its cell surface. And when there's no antigen on its cell surface, antibodies can't bind. Antibodies can't bind and coagulate. Antibodies like to look for foreign stuff. But this doesn't look foreign because there's no markers that says, hey, I'm foreign. Now on the other hand, the universal acceptor the universal acceptor is going to be the patient that can take any blood type. Okay, so what patient can take any blood type? Well, if, if you want to think of a guess right now, I'm just going to say it because then we can talk about it. So it's going to be an A, B, positive or negative? Okay, good. You were thinking positive. It's going to be an A, B positive patient. Now let's, let's think of why this is true. You've got a red blood cell here. You've got that A antigen, remember the triangle. You've got the B antigen, which was the square. Then you've also got this D antigen, which is gonna be a circle. So you've got the A, B, and the D, which makes sense. You've got the A, the B, and remember positive, negative, based on that presence of the D antigen, positive. Good, so our naming kind of correlates to our picture here. Now, remember I said that you have antibodies. IES. Okay, we have antibodies. Those go around and look for antigen, except our immune system likes to kill off the antibodies that are self-reactive. So if you have a self-reactive antibody, we'll get rid of it. So in this patient, they would have antigen A. So all those a antibodies, which look like Ys, they get killed off. All the B antibodies, we have B on the normal cell surface, so those antibodies get killed off. And then lastly, we have the D antigen, which is here, so those D antibodies would go and bind. However, we naturally present with D antigen as well, so we're going to get rid of those. So our body is making no antibodies against A, they're making no antibodies against B or D. So we can take any blood type. 
let's say an A positive cell. We're gonna have the triangles and we'll have the circles. Well, we don't make antibodies to those. They can also accept O negative. O negative is naked, it has no antigens. So, but good, I mean, we don't make antibodies against it anyway. So the universal acceptor has all of the antigens present. All of the antigens present tr triggers that immune system to get rid of those self-reactive uh, antibodies against the A, B, and D antigen. So we're gonna produce no antibodies against it. No antibodies means no cross-reaction or no coagulation, good thing. These are high yield subjects to remember, the universal donor, the universal acceptor. We're gonna go back to the anti-A concept. Uh, it just popped into my mind, the anti-A antibody is gonna be a test that's done in the laboratory. So what's gonna do is, we have all of these antibodies that we know are against uh, the A antigen. We know that this antibody right here only reacts with the A antigen. So when we have some patient's blood here that has that A antigen, then it'll cross-react. So this is done in the lab. So that, that's an important uh, concept to remember. So going back over everything, we talked about the ABO system, we talked about the RH system, and we also talked uh, about some clinical kind of vignettes. So just in summary right now, I'm gonna create a little table. So blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. So blood type over here. And then we'll do compatibility. Compatibility up there. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Compatibility. So what blood type is type A compatible with? So remember, I'm gonna go back. The universal donor is O negative. Universal acceptor is AB positive. They're really in search of O negative donors. So going here, blood type A is gonna be compatible with, uh, with A. Now, does that make sense? Of course. Uh, likewise, blood type B is going to be compatible with uh, B. Blood type AB can be compatible with A or B, while blood type O is going to be compatible with only blood type O. Okay, that makes sense. That is easy. So now let's talk about uh, plasma. So this is compatibility of blood. I guess I should have been a little more specific. Now we're going to talk about plasma. Plasma contains antibodies. So if we transfuse some plasma from a patient, when we, trans when we transfuse that plasma, it's going to also transfuse their antibodies. Well, that's not good, but we can use kind of a rule here, and this rule is going to figure out whether or not we're gonna have a reaction. So, in someone with type A blood, they can receive plasma from somebody, I guess here, we can also throw an O into all of these while I'm looking. Okay, with someone from type A blood, they can receive plasma from someone with type A plasma. Again, a no-brainer but they can also accept plasma from somebody that is AB positive. Now let's think about this. You're saying, uh-oh, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, doesn't stand for that. It stands for, uh-oh, this doesn't make sense. Well, yes, it does. So in someone that has blood type AB, it means they're not gonna produce antibodies against uh, A, or B, because remember, in someone with blood type AB, their plasma is not gonna contain antibodies against A or B. They don't want to create self-attacking antibodies, so they will not have antibodies against B, they will not have antibodies against A in their plasma, so 
blood type A is going to be safe. There's going to be no A or B antibodies in this plasma. You're safe. Here, for patient B, it's the exact same thing. Patient with B is safe, and AB is safe as well. So if someone's type B blood, you can transfuse them with plasma from someone with, who is AB positive. Now let's talk about what antibodies are going to be present in someone with A antigen. So blood type A, we take some of their plasma and we're going to give it to a patient. That plasma will contain no anti-A antibodies. So they'll only have antibodies against B. And that makes sense. But here we can give it to A because they don't have any B antigen, so who cares? We have antibodies against B, but it doesn't matter. Is that making a little sense? Hopefully it is. Um, it, it's, it's an important concept. I mean, blood compatibility is a little easier, but then plasma compatibility, you really have to think about antibodies. And, and to think about antibodies, you have to think about if someone who is AB positive, or who has AB blood, donated their plasma. They're not going to have antibodies against A. They're not going to have antibodies against B. You have to kind of think about this. I mean, we're taking the basic science that, that I covered at the beginning, and now we're integrating it. That's where the fun comes in. Okay, someone with AB positive blood. What plasma can they receive? Well, they're kind of limited. They're kind of out of luck. They can receive plasma from people who are AB positive only. And to do that, I'm going to put a little comma afterwards so that way only AB positive because since they have both antigens you have to have donor who doesn't produce antibodies against A or B so there's nothing else they're kind of all alone and then lastly blood type O now what kind of plasma can they get well remember how I said here they're the universal donor well for plasma they're going to be the universal plasma acceptor. So they can receive plasma from someone, of course, type O. But also they can receive plasma from someone who is A, someone who is B type blood, and someone who is AB blood. Well, why is that? Because in these examples, not the O. Well, I guess in the O. In these examples right here, the patient is making antibodies. So here, the patient's plasma will have anti-A and anti-B. It doesn't matter, they don't have antigens. Here they'll be producing antibodies against the B antigen. Don't matter, they don't have antigens. Here they'll produce anti antibodies against antigen A. Doesn't matter, they don't have antigens. And here they don't have any antibodies produced. Well, that's good because there's no antigen. So that's where the plasma comes in. So the universal plasma uh, donor is going to be the AB, while the universal plasma, um, let's see, did I say that right? The universal plasma donor is going to be AB, the universal plasma uh, acceptor is going to be type O. Okay. Um, anything else that I should talk about? Let me go back to my beginning, because I just kind of... Let's see, any other clinical aspects off the top of my head that I can think of? Um, I don't think so. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me. Uh, we covered the ABO system. We covered the RH system. And lastly, we talked about a couple clinical vignettes. We talked about the universal acceptor and donor of blood. We talked about plasma transfusions and uh, who can receive what. Hopefully I made it clear enough. If I didn't, be sure to ask questions because... Um, I typically respond within a day or two, depending on how busy my schedule is. Um, I, I do love answering questions to get you points for your test uh, to help you understand concepts. So thank you very much for paying attention. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Also I love comments just in general. Uh, like if you learned something, builds up my ego a little bit, you know. And then uh, lastly, subscribe for more great videos. Thanks.